okay guys in this video i will talk about some design aspect of floor beam okay so if you are new to this channel please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited okay so let's start uh, you know that to design any floor beam if you consider this particular floor and this main beam what you have to do you have to consider some effective area okay so effective area is like this okay and to design this floor beam you have to consider all the dead load plus live loads that is coming to this floor beam for this particular effective area okay and based on this dead load and live load you find out the uh, bending moment diagram as well as the shear force diagram and based on this maximum uh, bending moment okay and maximum shear force you design this floor beam okay so now my question is let's say you have a multi storied building okay like this just consider this one let's say you have a multi storied building like this and my question to you is let's say you are supposed to design all this floor beam okay whether all the design for this floor beam is same or not okay so many will answer that yes in all the floors the dead load and live load remain same so for this particular effective zone the maximum bending moment as well as the maximum shear force in each and every floor beam is same so the column will column size or the design of the column will varies but the design of the floor beam remain same okay or you can say that the size as well as the reinforcement requirement for all the floor beams is same okay but you are wrong why well the rest will explain this okay so in this case i have considered or we have considered only the dead load and live load okay so definitely in each and every floor for a multi storied building the dead load and live load remain more or less same so from that dead load and live load aspect the design of the floor beam remain same but in case of a multi storied building in addition to this dead load and live load there is some lateral load right okay so this lateral load may be due to wind load or maybe due to earthquake load okay so this wind load or earthquake load let's say we are considering the normal case that is the wind load okay so wind load is always acting on multi storied building the earthquake load is not uh, always acting it is a periodical load okay so we are not considering this one we are only considering this wind load what happens you know that the pressure distribution due to this wind load is something like this if this is the ground okay and let's say this is your uh, 100 meter height in that case the wind load distribution is something like this to some extent it is constant okay then it varies like this okay that means more is the height of the floor more is the load okay that is why in this floor here you can see that at the very first floor this is the magnitude let's say this is 5 kN but here the magnitude is higher in this floor in this second floor this is the first floor this is the second floor let's say this is the third floor okay or you can say this is the 10th floor this is 20th floor this is the 30th floor okay so here it, this is 5 kN here it is 15 kN and let's say here it is uh, almost uh, 30 kN so the lateral load varies so what lateral load varies what is the implication well so if this is the lateral load p and let's say this is the portal frame okay so this is the complete portal frame okay so if this is the lateral load p then what is the bending moment diagram for this lateral load well consider the joint in the middle of the column as well as at the middle of the beam 
and divide this lateral load P to this joint as P by 2 and P by 2. So, to this P by 2 in this point you will have some moment that is P by 2 times the height and that is the moment in your column. Okay? So, here you can see that due to this lateral load the moment in the column is PH by 2 and here you can see that in this joint or in this point there is no external applied moment. Okay? So, external moment is 0. So, the at this phase of this beam the moment must have to be such that it counters the moment in the column. So, magnitude of the moment at column is same as of the beam, but the sign is opposite. Okay? So, my point is that due to this lateral load here you will have some moment in this beam. Okay. So, in each and every floor beam here you can see this is the moment. Okay. This is the moment due to lateral load. All these are the moment due to lateral load. And this moment in the beam is a function of lateral load. Right. So, if the lateral load varies, this moment also varies. Right. So, we can say that the topmost floor, this bending moment is maximum. The bending moment due to the lateral load or wind load is maximum at the topmost floor. Why? Just because of the higher intensity of the lateral load. Okay. So, now it is clear to you that in addition to the gravity load in each and every uh, frame, there will be some lateral load. Okay. And as this lateral load varies with the height, okay. So, with the height, this lateral load varies. Though the bending moment diagram due to this gravity load or dead load, live load remains same for all the floors, but due to this lateral load, okay, this bending moment diagram changes or the maximum bending moment at the beam increase or decrease okay if you increase the height it will increase the bending moment and if you decrease the height this bending moment will decrease so due to this lateral load consideration the design of the floor beam also change okay so that's it if you love this video don't forget to share it